Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be going over the Uber Tristram Rib Cracker Fury Druid build. This build optimizes an ethereal upgraded rib cracker as a main weapon and it just rips through the Ubers. I tried some variations with the build including the mercenary and some different charms to try and go outside of the norm. Some of it worked, some of it didn't so I'll be going over that. I'll be going over the stats, skills, items, pre-buffs, and mercenary options as well. Also, in the description, I'll put links to my other Fury Druid builds. This includes an Immortal King Fury Druid build, a pure PVM build, and other variant of the Uber Tristram build as well. So I'm going to start off with the gear section, and as this build is, it's an Ribcracker Fury Druid build. So your main weapon is going to be an ethereal upgraded Ribcracker that's Zodded. And you Zod it so it's indestructible. You have Crushing Blow and that does massive damage to bosses. It has some increased attack speed and it has 50 faster hit recovery. So right off the bat, you're hitting the four frames of faster hit recovery level, which is 42% in wolf form. So this is going to be the weapon of choice for this build. For my helmet, I'm going to use one of the main druid helmets and I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's the Jellel's main. You could always upgrade it if you want a little bit more defense but it's good just basic as it is. And this helmet with the 30% faster hit recovery, it will help you towards your goal of hitting the three frames, which is 86 in wolf form. So that's very nice to have. It gives plus to your druid skills, some shape-shifting skills. It gives strength. I put an um rune in it to give a little bit more resistance on top of the resistances that it naturally gives. Mephisto's Conviction Aura hits really, really hard. So you want to make sure that you're able to tank that a little bit. So this is the helmet of choice. Also, the little bonus from attack rating will really, really help you in hitting the bosses. For your jewelry, for amulet, I have to go with the High Lords. I mean, there's no other amulet I would really use. It gives you Deadly Strike. It gives you Lightning Resistance, which helps against Mephisto again. And it gives you some increased attack speed and plus one to all your skills. If you really need to try to get a variant, I guess you could always go with Atmas, you could go with a metal grid that gives some attack rating too, and that gives resistances as well. But I like going with High Lords. For my rings, always got to go with a Raven Frost that gives cannot be frozen, it gives attack rating, some to dexterity. It's just a good ring to have. For your other ring, if you don't want to do another Raven Frost, you could always go with a Wisp if you're lacking in resistances. That way, the Lightning Absorb, when Mephisto hits you, you could absorb it a little bit. You go with a nature's peace. I don't think, there we go. I have one right here. That helps slain monsters rest in peace. And it gives a little bit damage reduction. This way when you're hitting the skeletons from Mephisto, they kind of just stay dead a little bit. So it's up to you. There's always other options. You could always get a crafted ring or something of that nature. But if you're just going to stick to the basic of looking for uniques, then you could go with an option, either two Raven Frost, a Raven and Wisp, a raven and nature's peace or something of that variant for my gloves i gotta go with drax they give the life tap which really helps out when you're attacking it heals you it also has some life leech comes with some open wounds as well but the, the life tap is what you really need here so there are no other options i would go with drax for boots you could go with goblin toe if you want a cheaper variant but i like gore riders they give crushing blow deadly strike and open wounds so you can either go with Gore Riders or Goblin Toe. For my belt, I went with Vertingos. It gives you 10% faster hit recovery, and right there will put you at 90. So again, you're clearing the 86 threshold. It gives you life, and it gives you some damage reduction as well. If you want to use a different belt, you could always get a Shapeshifting Grand Charm with 12 faster hit recovery on it, and then swap this out with... Maybe a Thunder Gods. I would go with a String of Ears for a backup version of a belt. But for this build, I'm going with Vertigo's. For my armor for this build, I went with Chains of Honor. It gives plus two to the skills. But I really got it for the resistances. And it gives a little bit of life lead, some strength. But really just for the resistances and the physical damage reduction. If you have good resistances and you have like, let's say, some resistance small charms. Or you pre-buff with the Treachery then you could wear Fortitude. That gives you some more damage. It gives a little bit of resistances, gives you some life, and some extra damage. So this is a good alternative. It just depends on which one you want to use. You can either use Chains of Honor or Fortitude. 
For my charms, I purposely left some blank spaces just to show that I'm not overpowering on everything maxed out. So here I have three shape-shifting lifers, 40 life, 45 is perfect, and then I have a physical sunder charm here. Here I have 520 life, 5 resistance small charms. You could always get variants of this. You could alternate them with 20 life or single element resistances. They go up to 11 and you could just put them in the blank spaces just to reach the same level stats that I have with this build. I have three 320 20s and then I went with two poison small charms to try and help with Bale's healing. He's kind of a jerk about it, so hopefully this helps eliminate his healing power. And then I have the best Annie I could possibly get and try to get the best Druid Torch you can get. For pre-buffing, you always go with a Call to Arms and a Spirit just for high-level battle orders. And then you could go with a Metamorphosis, switch between the Werewolf and Werebear so you get the marks for each one, and that should help you a little bit if you want the extra attack rating and the physical damage reduction, stuff like that. You don't have to use it, but again, if you want to, it'll help. You can always put on a treachery, go to, let's say, Frigid Highlands and get Fade casted. That way you get a little bit more resistances. And you could go with a Demon Limb for a level 23 enchant to get a little bit more extra attack rating, which will help you hit the bosses more. Again, you don't have to, but this will help you optimize your character. For my mercenary, I tried to do something different. It really didn't work out too well, but I'm just going to give you what my thought process was. So I went with an Act 3 Fire Mercenary. I really like the Act 3 Mercenaries. I know they suck, but I just want to try to bring some vitality to them, and they just, they, they're garbage. But I tried getting a high-level enchant to try to get away from using the Demon Limb. This gave me about three or 4,000 more uh, attack rating with this. So I had an Act 3 Mercenary with a, an F Spirit, an F Chains of Honor, a Flickering Flame, and then I put a Hex Fire on him to try to get as much high-level enchant as I could. Again, this is not optimal. I tried it, and it was just, he dies too quick. So a good variant would be an Act 1 Mercenary with Faith. She survives pretty decent for me. I've tested it, I've tried it, and it just works. The Fanaticism really gives you more damage and helps speed up your attacks. So that's really nice to have here. So if you're looking for an alternative to the Act 3 Mercenary, which I tried and it's not normal, go with an Act 1 Mercenary with Faith if you can. If you can't get a face with that, go with an Act 2 Mercenary with Might to give you a little bit more damage as well. So those are the options for Mercenaries. Again, the Act 3, I just tried something different and it really just sucked. So for my stats, I put enough strength to wear my heaviest item, which is a Spirit Monarch, which costs 156. Here I have 85 base points into it. For Dexterity, I wanted to hit at least 15,000 attack rating with my Fury. So I put enough points to hit that. And then I put the rest of my points into Vitality to get as much life as I possibly can. And with all this, you'll have maximum resistances as well. Here you could see you have 90 faster hit recovery. 86 is the three frame break point, so we clear that. You have 70 increased attack speed. You have some open wounds, 35%, 65% trance of crushing blow, and 51% deadly strike. So these are the stats of the Uber Tristram Fury Druid. For your skills, you're going to have a lot left over because summons just suck in the Uber Tristram. Your spirits, they just get decimated. Everything else, it just, they're garbage. So I don't even bother with them. Shape-shifting skills, you're going to max out Werewolf, Lycanthropy, and then you're going to max out Fury. I put one point into Werebear and then at least one in the mall just to kind of make sure you cast the mark if you want to use Metamorphosis. If not, don't worry about it. But again, you're going to have all these extra points. It's not really going to matter. Elemental, I didn't even touch it. You could put some in the Cyclone Armor if you want some sort of Absorb, but really you're not going to get that much. So just focus on maxing out these three. And if you want to try to get a Grizzly or something to help with a tank you go for it but other than that it's pretty much useless and this is my uber tristram 
Rib Cracker Fury Druid. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you at least try it out to see how you like it. I have a gameplay video up as well. And I'm also going to end this video with a Uber Tristram run. So again, thank you for checking out my video. Check out my other Fury Druid builds in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.